2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Across Newcastle and the Hutter, 2NURFM 103.7, as we have a look on a fortnightly basis, as we do with our Professor of Education, John Fischetti, uh, all the things that are happening in the educational realm, John, and you've written a piece that you want to sort of, uh, sort of explore in great detail today about the university sector, not the three things that they can do to survive, the things that they might look at considering doing, but the three things universities must do to survive. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. I How think, in danger are they? Well, I think does Australia need 40-plus major universities with 25 million people. I would think so. <laughs> and if I told you that with the average Australian young person now online nine hours a day, some of that what we used to call television, I realize, three hours of that in social media, and the platforms of learning becoming virtual mm. more than they are face-to-face, can they survive during the financial model with most everybody now seeking to do things, at least a lot of it, without ever stepping away from their phone? It's almost a, it's the, the kind of the shopping center argument, the bricks and mortar versus online shopping. It's kind of like that. And if most of the type of teaching that is done at universities is didactic, which means somebody stands in front and talks, you take notes, there'll be a, quest, uh, a quiz, any questions, mm. that obsolescence, if we can't transform that, there is no real future for universities. In the, in the new world of, that we're going in, which I call interconnected. The thing that I think has changed most in our lifetimes is we are totally connected to one another, to the institutions, to the planet for everything that we do. Every decision we make impacts somebody else or the land in which we uh, interact. So if you are one of the 40 plus universities or you, you've started to read uh, your document, John, or you're listening and thinking, actually, I think he's right. I mean, what, is, what are the few things that they need to, uh, to, that they must do to sort of survive with the, with the fact that, that you're right, everything well, has changed? Two major changes. One is that people want the doses of their learning in chunks or little modules or little short courses or what has been called the massive online courses. The acronym is MOOC. So they don't want to wait three years to get a diploma or a testamer. They'd love to be able to have little chunks of learning because maybe just this time I just need what is part of your first course or your mm. third course in that one learning outcome. So being able to deliver learning in a variety of approaches, not just in degrees that take you from a year or two or three or four or five to complete. Mm. And then each one of those modules or courses or certificates or MOOCs should have something which you get to apply in the real world, not just theory, because you can do that without ever having to register for anything. You can do that now for free, just going online for anything in the world through a variety of different tools. So that would be applying that learning, not just taking it in. Most of that we never actually remember anyway. No, you got me there. <laughs> I think the other, the, the kind of the reverse side of that is it is good to sort of have the comfort of sort of having, you know, the teachers, the lecturers, whoever that you can actually approach in person and yep. and get that one-on-one face-to-face, hey, I'm having trouble with this, can you explain this and get that. So that's probably the, the fail-safe, am I right? Sure. Well, some of that is just asking Siri because that's some true. of those <laughs> things are basic questions. Mm. So if it's more than that, I agree with you. If it's mm. just basic facts, the smart tools are actually better at that. They're also 24 seven. Sometimes they come on when you don't even know they're there. Uh, so the three basic pillars of this revamped university start with the notion of engagement and impact. That whatever degree or subunit of a degree you do, the purpose of that is that we're gonna partner with the real world, those partners out in the world. So if in nursing, obviously that's in the healthcare profession. If it's in the marine sciences, it might be with a dolphin, uh, that we're engaging in the real world and attempting to influence some improvement of that, impacting it, making it better. And most of that now happens at the postgrad space, where you see the results of your work in those fields when you come back and do a master's or a PhD. We need that in every learning module, that there's some application of the learning. We, the vernacular is work integrated learning or internship or practicum. Every experience should have some mini dose of that. Some of that can be simulation. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical in, in the, the world that we call the real world. I feel where you're saying where you're going to go here is that uh, the universities need to become better at all, uh, the online side of things and become uh, be able to sell the fact, hey, our university has better online. It's more simpler. It's more user friendly. There's a lot more tools in, in ours than the competition up the road, which is could be anywhere now. Well, th- those tools then give us the chance to do things for the second pillar, which is about enhancing humanity. So the face to face thing should be about that impact or us watching you do things like run a morning show uh, and then critiquing that and improving that if if, it were, if there were any glitches at all. Uh, and then. And then 
the purpose then is to make sure we're doing things for the betterment. You know, the license for 2NUR is about the betterment of the community. And that aspect of things, how are we improving humanity? A degree or a certificate of diploma should represent that. The third is we actually have to enhance access. There are universities in Australia that deliberately leave students out. They say you don't have the high enough marks or you didn't jump the right hoop to get in. Actually, what the learners of today need is more pathways into university because for the rest of our lives, whether you're 16 or 50 or 86, the continuous learning process means you'll always want to engage to add new knowledge to what you currently have. So that means we need more pathways in, particularly for those in the past that have been shut out, because as we've talked about a lot of times, there's nothing to do if you're under or uneducated in society, and there used to be. If it hasn't, you haven't been replaced by a robot, you will, if you're working in an industry that can be redundant. So everybody's gonna have to go back to school, but that school's gonna have to prepare you realistically for what actually you will do, talk about embracing and enhancing humanity, and then we need multiple ways in. So those universities that would be the G8, those fancy hoity-toity sandstone universities, actually now limit access I propose they have to expand it by giving more people access in to the knowledge and skills and dispositions of the future. Are you almost suggesting there that the idea of exclusivity is, while in the past has been uh, something that can sort of really be, as a selling tool, it's kind of going to work against them? Right. And that brand is not necessary when you can get something now cheaper, quicker and faster shipped to your door than going to the shopping mall and negotiating a car park and getting it. So the world we're in now is what you want, when you want, where you want, and how you want. And learning is now moving into that domain as well. But we also have to build well-being, not at the back end of a degree or a program where you might fall over, we're going to help you up, but actually how you're going as a human through this process is vital because anxiety, stress, and the burdens of our, of our day-to-day pressures are wearing people out, particularly in the high-need areas of elder care, or in working with young children, working with people who are incarcerated, in any of the mental health and social policy issues, social work as well, we need to prepare people for those so they also stay well themselves. We shouldn't be producing new learners who themselves are not happy and not able to negotiate it. And the skill set I call life ready. We've talked a lot about work ready in the in the industry. What make you, we need to work? We need to make you life ready, which is that balance of being a happy human, a productive one, a good citizen, but also an engaged learner and continued good worker in whatever your discipline is. Anything that can improve all of those sounds like a pretty good idea, John. So if I guess anybody that's uh, in a university, maybe have a look at his uh, his uh, writings this morning. We've got that for you up at our morning show page at twnurfm.com. The three things that universities must do to survive. John Fischetti, thank you as always. To NURFM 103.7.